finish up with the disciples today. Jesus has been crucified and he's resurrected, but the disciples are a wreck. They're a wreck. Can you say wreck? And hang in here with me. Now, here we go. They're a wreck. They need to get back on their feet. And the way I like to preach, guys, is I like to see me in the Bible. All right? I need help. I'm the one that needs help, okay? They've already got their help. I need help. So I try to read the Bible, teach the Bible, preach the Bible from a perspective of real life. And that's what we're going to do here. I've been doing it. So let's check out real scriptures, real Bible, real stories, real events. And let's see if we can learn something that helps us. A little bit crazy message today. Can you say that with me? Full field. Now you're really going to have to watch it. My words are going to be a play on words today. You're going to get so confused if you don't set up and pay attention. And that's you online watching right now. Set up. Here we go. Get out of bed. Here we go. Ready? Set one more time. Full field. The words full and field sound like the same word almost. They mean the same thing. Full and field. I'm filled. Might not be good English, but it sounds right, right? I'm full. I'm filled. Whatever. Sounds similar. Sounds like the same thing, is it? Let's keep looking. Little subtitle of my message today. Say that with me. Filling the. One more time. Filling the. A lot of people in church feel the feeling. They feel the feeling. They feel the feeling of the Spirit. They'll run around, flop like a chicken, act like crazy people. They feel the feeling. Well, I'm sort of a practical guy. I'd like to have the feeling before I get the feeling. You hear me? I like the horse before the cart. Y'all hear me or not? That's the message today. You're going to say, well, this is a crazy message. Well, it is a crazy message. Come on. But he's dealing with crazy people. He picked fishermen to change the world. He picked disciples who didn't hardly know anything about the Bible, the Old Testament. He called these guys. They had cast nets and whatever. Follow me. And they're okay. <sighs> and he's had a lot of trouble with these guys. But he's had them for three years. And now he's crucified. He's risen. He's appeared to them four times. And they're still crazy. All right? So let's talk about it. But let's look at this word, full. What does the word full mean? Usually when I preach, I use the Bible. An old, I use the old King James because I'm old-fashioned. That's what I use. I like it. And I use a Webster's Dictionary. So here's the Webster's Dictionary. Full, what does it mean? Completely occupied. It means complete. It means broad and ample, full. Got it? Yes or no? Now, let's go. You know you're going to school with me today, did you? Here we go. Filled. Okay, let's see if it's the same word. It means cause. See, it's a different word, isn't it? It's cause to be what? It's different than full. Filled <laughs> is what full needs to get full. Got it? Say yeah, full, full needs filled to be full. Filled means satisfied the requirements to be full. Filled means enough to be full. So they are very similar in nature, but without filled, you would have no full. Have I lost you? I was doing this in my office, like banging my head against a wall. Now, since the arrest of Jesus in the garden, when Judas showed up with the soldiers, Peter went ballistic, took his sword, cut off Malchus' ear. Right in the Bible, gives you the guy's name. Jesus did like... <laughs> From that point on, they've been a disaster. The disciples have lived a nightmare. They lived with the son of the living God for three years. They saw things that eyes have never seen. And now he's arrested. He's been crucified. Their life's a mess. The Bible says every one of them, every disciple, not just Peter, every disciple forsook Jesus and fled. Every one of them. So this is what we've been trying to use as our series. 
how do you get back on your feet? Well, they had to do it. And we're here today, 2,000 years later, so it's obvious they did get back on their feet or we wouldn't be here today. They had the responsibility to take the gospel in all the world, every creature, baptizing in the name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. So somebody did it. And it was them. So they got back on their feet so I can learn how to get back on my feet. So getting back on their feet, say it with me, was the what? And you'll learn if you keep talking with me, you'll learn something today. Keep looking. Let's go, Raj. Now their feelings were all over the place. Can you imagine what they were feeling? Can you imagine what they were feeling? Their feelings led them in the wrong direction. Jesus told them, stay right here in Jerusalem. They went back to Galilee. Remember? Say. Peter went back to his old way of what? Fishing. Fishing. And they were all floundering, weren't they? Going back to their old way of life. And Jesus showed up right there, John 21. That was the third time he met with the disciples. So they were all over the place. Their feelings left them what? Directionless and incomplete. Let's stop right there. How many would say, Pastor Gary, because things in my life, struggles in my life, there have been certain times in my life, you might be there now, I don't know, but that I have felt directionless. Can I see that? I just didn't know where to go, where to turn, what to do. You ever been like that? What do you do? Well, if you trust your feelings, how many ever did that? You trusted your feelings and boy, were they ever wrong. So can I see your head? Whoa! That was the dumbest thing I ever did. And you felt like it was right. The resurrected Jesus has met with the disciples four times. And they were still, say it with me, unfulfilled. There we go. Now you know where I'm going with my message, right? They were what? Unfulfilled. He met with them in the room there with Thomas absent, he met with them there again with Thomas present. He met with them in John 21 on the shore. He met with them fourth and final time on the Mount of Olives. We talked about this. If you've been with us, you'll know. Mount of Olives, right outside of Jerusalem. And that's where he ascended into heaven. And the angels appeared and said, why are your boys standing down here looking? This same Jesus that has gone away will come again in like manner. And the, and the, the gang sang today, Jesus is coming soon. Right from the Bible. Amen. And Jesus said, don't you leave Jerusalem. He tells them. And finally, the disciples got their focus. They weren't full. And they weren't filled. And they weren't fixed. But at least they got some what? Focus. 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 If you want to get back on your feet and get off your back, get back up on your feet, you're going to have to focus. Say focus. You're going to have to focus. You're going to have to know that you matter. You're going to have to know that your life matters. You're going to have to know I need him and I need help. You can do this. And so they got some focus. They got some focus. So what did the disciples do? We saw it two weeks ago because last week was Memorial Day message. They returned to Jerusalem. I mean, I, I give them some credit, but it was like, okay, it's right over there, okay? Wasn't that hard? You just go down the hill, and there you are. You go through a giant graveyard now because all the graves that have been put on that hillside because Jesus will return there, the Bible says, so everybody wants to be buried there. They want to be first to go. Sort of silly, isn't it? But hey, it's okay. So they return to Jerusalem. The Bible tells us this in Acts. They continued, say it with me, in what? Unity, prayer, and supplication. Can you feel them getting some direction, yes or no? Can you feel them at least finally, after four appearances from the resurrected Christ, they're finally getting some focus. And I think what really kicked them in the tail was the angels and Jesus saying to them, I got my job to do. I'm going to be the right hand of God. The Father, boys, this is it. This is the last time you're going to see me. But he said, I won't leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The Holy Spirit will come. When I was preparing this message, I didn't realize it until yesterday. This is Pentecost Sunday. This is basically seven weeks since Easter. 
This is Pentecost Sunday. And look at that. I'm preaching the message today on Pentecost. This is what this is today. The filling of the Holy Spirit. I want the filling before I get the feeling. Did you hear me say? These boys have had the feeling. They've been feeling, feeling empty, feeling like they can't make it, feeling like they're failures. I want the feeling before I get the feeling. I want to be fully filled. Amen? That's what I want. That's the message today. Even though it's a little goofy, you're going to get it if you hang in here. So, the last thing they did as far as focus, they did what? Rectified a bad situation. What was the bad situation the disciples rectified? Somebody say it. They dealt with who? They dealt with what situation? The what situation? The Judas situation. They dealt with the Judas situation. There had been 12 of them, now there's 11. And that Judas thing plagued them. And a lot of times, it's things like that that will keep us from getting back on our feet. We have to rectify some bad stuff in our life sometimes. And that's what they did. They chose two to fill the one spot. And they were both good. The requirements were he had to be with us since Jesus was baptized with John the Baptist. He had to have walked with us all those three years. He had to be there at the crucifixion and resurrection. And there was two they thought of, and they ended up choosing Matthias. Can you say Matthias? So here they are. They're 12 again. They've got their focus. But they're still not, they're still not what they need to be at all. They need the Holy Spirit. And people, basically, people are hanging over hell. The human race is hanging over hell if these guys don't make it. That's crazy, ain't it? Have you ever thought that you matter like that? That I'm needed like that? My testimony, my story. Well, I can't talk about Jesus. Well... Maybe somebody's hanging over hell that needs you. They need your personality. They need your, your way. That, I know I talk different. I'm different. But certain people can understand me. And they need me. You hear me? These disciples, I'm telling you. If they hadn't got their act together, what would have happened? Oh, it would have been fine. No, it wouldn't have been. God was counting on them. Amen. He's counting on us. This is a big deal. Now, feelings and filling are not the same thing. Have we already proved that? Good. I can be full and not feel it. This is the way I am every day. I'm this way every day. I eat like a pig. I eat and I'm full. But no, I ain't full. I can eat some more. How many are like me like that? You eat and you know you ate too much. You ate too much. I don't have this problem. The second one, I can feel full and not be full. I never have that problem. Alex tells me in my office as I go over the message with him, he says, that's what happens when you eat Chinese food. I said, I don't know. I don't eat much Chinese food. Southern food, biscuits, gravy, grits. You'll feel full. And then at the end, a half a gallon of ice cream. You're good to go. Come on. Anyway, let's keep looking. So feelings and full are not the same thing. You can, feel, you can be full and not feel it. And you can feel full and not be. So let's talk a little bit about it. But here's the point. Here's the point. I want to be fulfilled. Say that with me. It's a weird statement. I wrote it. It's nuts. Here we go. I want to be fulfilled and filling the... One more time. I want to be fulfilled and filling the, the feeling. And let's just keep looking and see what we can find. Getting back on your feet's more than a feeling or an emotion, guys. Did you hear me? You better, if you want to get back on your feet, you better, you better rely on somebody more than just yourself. And you better rely on something more than just feelings. You ever felt like killing somebody? Let's see a hand or two. You lie like a dog. I didn't say, did you kill them? But you didn't do it. Well, you and me didn't do it, Martha, okay? 
You ever felt like doing something really bad to somebody, but you didn't do it? Let me see the hands on now. Now, you're, I got you now. There you go. We don't always do what we feel, but sometimes we do what we feel, and we end up regretting it. We need to be filled with the Spirit. I want the feeling of emptiness to be completely gone in my life. Say that with me. I want the feeling of emptiness to be gone. If I'm going to have the feeling of emptiness gone in my life, thanks, buddy. He's flashing lights back there, and it's still early yet. That's not good for y'all. Anyway, I want that feeling of emptiness to be gone in my life. I've been beat down. I've been hurt. I've wanted to take my own life. That's horrible. That's horrible that I felt that way. That's because I didn't know I mattered, that I have value. That's why I say it a lot now. I matter. Say it with me. I, I have when you start to realize that, wow, it can change your whole world. It can make you want to live again. Amen? So this is important. I want to be what? Fulfilled, guys. Now, we had not gotten to the Bible a lot yet, but we're just setting the table, but we're fixing to. Here we go. The disciples had been chosen by Jesus along the Sea of Galilee. They had been commissioned to go into all the world to preach the gospel with every creature. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm with you always, even in the end of the world. It's going to require, if they're going to do this, it's going to require filling over their what? Feelings. We've watched their feelings, and it's took them everywhere except the right place. So something must have happened to them. Something did happen. It's called the filling of the Holy Spirit. The most misunderstood and confusing thing in the church today, I think, is the filling of the Holy Spirit. People on TV are nuts. You hear me, yes or no? I'm watching a guy the other night. He's absolutely nuts. And then he looks at the TV and says, there's preachers out there that think I'm crazy. You better be careful calling me crazy. And I'm like, I'm calling you crazy, okay? Because you are crazy. He's saying I'm blaspheming the Holy Spirit because him acting like a lunatic. He's saying God's causing him to act like a lunatic. And I don't buy it. Are you hearing me? Yes or no? I don't know what you buy, but you're not going to threaten me with that. You hear me? You're not going to threaten me with your quackery. You hear me? Yes or no? The world gets it. You're a nut. The church won't say it because I can't say that. That's not very Christian. That's the dumbest thing on the planet. Amen? Now, I want the filling of the Spirit. I just don't want that, what that joker's doing. Y'all hear me or not? I, didn't believe, I don't believe the Holy Spirit came to make us crazy. I believe He came to fill us so we'd never be alone. He would empower us to do what? To go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. People are not going to hear if we act like lunatics. Y'all hear me or not? I know this is, this is a little tough. It might be on your toes a little bit. That's what you're used to. Good. It's good you hear another perspective. Amen. Say. And you'll see mine's right on the Bible today. If I'm not on the Bible, talk to me later. Come see me in my office. All right? I'm willing to be corrected. So, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and we're, today is the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the, uh, of Easter. Isn't that crazy? And that's why I go outside and look at the beautiful uh, fabric that's hanging on the third, the middle cross and, uh, and the dove. I didn't do that, but sweet Mrs. King wanted to do that today. Yeah, isn't that awesome? When the day of Pentecost was fully, look, there's our word, what? Fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. They had their focus. They were in unity. They were together. They had rectified the Judas problem. They were still scared to death. They were huddled together thinking they're going to be slaughtered. They were huddled together 50 days after Passover. 50 days after Jesus' crucifixion. They're in one accord and in one place. Now stop right there if you would, Raj. What is Pentecost? A lot of people think Pentecost, Pentecostals. You ever heard of Pentecostals? Pentecostals didn't make up Pentecost. Pentecost is way back in the book of Leviticus. Pentecost didn't start with the filling of the Holy Spirit. Are y'all listening to me or not? Pentecost didn't start at that, uh, with the filling of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost started in Leviticus. It was 50 days after Passover. What's Passover? Are you listening? Passover was when the blood was put on the doorpost and the death angel, if the blood was there, the death angel 
would, not pass, would, spare, would spare that life and would pass over that house. And Israel was delivered from Egypt. You remember, yes or no? It was everything to the Jewish nation in the law, in the scriptures. And they were to celebrate 50 days later, Pentecost. They celebrated, listen, with sacrifices. They celebrated for forgiveness of sin and for guilt to be removed. That's called Pentecost. Pentecost has not changed. God didn't change. Pentecost in Leviticus was all about the Pentecost that was going to happen in the book of Acts. Jesus was slain before the foundations of, of the world. It didn't, it didn't shock God that Adam sinned. He knows everything. Jesus was planned to die before the foundations of the world. That's how big God is. I can't take his mind. His mind's crazy. Amen? Say. He knows everything. And so Leviticus, Pentecost was a picture of what was going to happen one day. There would be a sacrifice for our sins. So that guilt and shame could be removed. Are y'all hearing me or not? But you wouldn't have to go do it every year. Once for all, he would enter. And he would sit down the right hand of God, the Father. And he'd say, it is finished. Amen. Can we thank him for that? Amen. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on. So, Pentecost never was supposed to be about us running up and down aisles. I like to run. I like to get happy. I like to get excited. Not against that. It was never meant you'll be fit. People teach today if you don't have the filling of the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. Pentecost was never about that. Pentecost was about people getting saved. Pentecost was about you'll be filled with the Spirit so that disciples, you can go in the world and be empowered to share the good news of Jesus. You hearing me, yes or no? Does that make sense to you? Being filled with the Spirit didn't mean so you could get you a new car. Are y'all listening or not? Or being filled with the Spirit didn't mean you could give some money and you get ten times back. Come on, man. It was never about you. You got it or not? It was always about Him. Read your Bible and see how many times the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, truth, 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 spirit, truth, truth. And so many lies have been propagated on the Holy Spirit. And to me, it sickens me. I know I'm tough today, but it's Pentecost for crying out loud. Why wouldn't I stand for the truth? It's all about you sharing the good news. Sharing the gospel is the hardest thing you'll ever do. It's the most important thing you'll ever do. You cannot do it in your own strength. You need the Holy Spirit. You hear me? Yes or no? That's what these guys had. Let's look at it. Now I got off on that. Man, I about passed out right there. I guess I was filled with the Spirit. Well, why am I feeling like I'm having a heart attack? They are together. They're not scattered anymore. They're ready. Can you say ready? Don't you want to be fulfilled? Don't you want to finally have the filling of the Spirit in your life and not just live life by feelings? So, number one, say it with me. They are what? They're filled up with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Acts 2 Verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them, the disciples, cloven, very interesting word, cloven means two, or split. I'm not an expert on cloven, okay? There appeared in them cloven tongues, the word tongues is dialect, say dialect. I'm not, a, I'm not an English scholar or a Greek scholar, but I can actually see the Greek language because this was written in Greek and the word means dialect. Did you hear me, yes or no? That's what the word means. You can't make it some other word and call it gibberish or spirit talk. The word is dialect. Like as of fire. And it said on each of them. 
Jesus said this would happen. The church would be birthed. He's at the right hand of God the Father. The Holy Spirit will come. Say it with me. And they were all what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't be confused. Same word, Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other what? Other tongues. And what's the word for tongues? Dialects. Dialects. Language. That somebody somewhere can understand. Got it? Yes or no? And they began to speak with tongues as the what? Spirit gave them what? It's just really interesting. Jesus didn't pick scholars to take the gospel into all the world. He picked people that couldn't speak but one English, one language. That's all they could do. That's all they could do. They were fishermen. You think they sit at home learning other languages? Come on. He's been trying from the beginning to let us know it's all about him. And if you're going to do this, you're going to have to rely on me and be filled with the Spirit with me. Keep looking. So, they're filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in these tongues. The word tongues is the word dialects. You can easily put that in your Bible. And ne you never hear the word. They're speaking in tongues. No, they're speaking in dialects. That's the word you should use. They're speaking in understandable language to somebody on this planet. Okay? If there's 300 languages, I don't know how many they are. They're speaking one of them. Okay? How hard is this to understand? Now, here's the cool thing. Did Pentecost start 50 days after Jesus resurrected? Or had Pentecost started years ago in Leviticus in the Old Testament? It started when? Years ago in the Old Testament. That's why Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem. Don't lose this. He said, guys, stay right here. They're going to go back to Galilee. The farther you get away from Jerusalem, the less you believe in the, the Old Testament and the Scriptures. That was way back then. It's still true today. Stay in Jerusalem. It's Grand Central Station for the Jewish faith. And they were coming from all over to celebrate what? The crucifixion of Jesus? No! They were coming from all over different dialects. Shazam! They were coming from all over to celebrate what? Passover. I mean, excuse me, Pentecost. Got that? They were coming to celebrate what? Pentecost. So watch it. There were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of what? Every what? Nation. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were what? When what was noised abroad? That these people in this room, and I think there was about 120 of them, not just the disciples, but others. Word got out that these Galileans are speaking some funny kind of stuff. And it confounded everybody. Who wouldn't be? Yes or no? It'd be, it'd be crazy. But here's the cool thing. They were confounded... All these different nations, different dialects are there. They were confounded. Say that with me. Because that every man did what? Heard in his own what? So these guys, what they were speaking, the different dialects, the different nations could hear in their own language. Did I lose anybody on that? You try to listen to tongues on TV and you tell me what language it is. I challenge you. Did you know we have people pretty smart in Fellowship Church? We have actual linguists in this church. Linguists. Linguists that speak many languages. And they've had to work their tail off to do it. But they're pretty smart when they hear stuff. I had lunch with one the other day. You hear me or not? Just because somebody can say stuff, don't be, don't be, don't be fooled into thinking that's a dialect. Are you hearing me or not? And I'm not trying to be mean today. I'm just trying to teach the scriptures. 
Okay? Even though I know you're thinking, he's really ticked off today. I'm not. So they heard everybody speaking their own language. Keep going. And they were all what? If you heard me speak French today, how many would be amazed? Raj, we're going to go a couple more minutes. Okay, hang in. We won't make it through the whole message, but we're going to make it through the meat of it. Okay, buddy? We'll be fine. And they said one to another, and this is the whole point. Are these not all what? Galileans. Are not these, you can fill this blank. Are not all these dumb hillbillies? These are not educated men. How do we hear every man in our own dialect? Where we were born. It's so clear. Is that not clear? Yes or no? How many were born in this room into a foreign language house? Can I see your hand? I was born into a foreign language house. Okay, just a couple in the room. Good. I see over here, down here. What language? Spanish. What language? Y'all need to talk later. How about that? Amen? <laughs> see, because I can't talk because I don't understand that. But he understands that dialect, and he will be able to talk with you. See how that works? Isn't that amazing? Here we go. It even goes on to tell you exactly what nations were there. Is it a full list? I don't know if it's a full list or not. I would say probably not. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia. So Asians were there. Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egyptians, parts of Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Italians were there. Is there a difference between, let me just ask you, is there a difference between the Italian language and the language Asians speak? Is there? Oh, I don't know. Is there? Well, of course there is. How are they going to hear Cretes, that's Greek, ain't it, Dina? Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own dialect. The wonderful works of God. Do you see why the disciples had to stay in Jerusalem? Yes or no? Do you see why Jesus needed them? Say, you, need, you see why he needed them back on their feet again? I need you, boys. I need you to do what you're called to do. But the church has gone crazy today. A little bit. A lot. Amen? So now what do they do? They stand up and witness for Jesus Christ. I'll read it. They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What does this mean? What does this mean? Others mocking said, these men are drunk. If I heard you talk in some other dialect that I didn't understand, that might be something I'd say. You're just drunk. Because I can't understand it. But other people could understand it. And it had purpose and meaning. These people needed to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Y'all hear me? These, say that with me. These people needed to hear the what? Gospel of Jesus Christ. It was important that they picked Matthias. And not some Johnny-come-lately joker. They needed to fill that spot with somebody who had been there from John the Baptist all the way to the cross. Why? So that he could be a faithful witness. He could, any, he, he could tell anybody all the things that he saw, and he could be a witness of the Lord. Y'all hear me or not? Keep looking. So Peter's standing up with the who? Say it with me, with the who? With the 11. It's interesting. Where's Matthias? It's a good question. Or who, where's the other one? Or no, they're all there. Excuse me. Peter plus the 11 equals what? Gotcha. Good. I'm learning with you. He lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Now listen, guys. Why is the eleven mentioned? G Peter standing up with the eleven. And I'm not so certain that the others in the room aren't there as well. That's my opinion. They're there as Peter is speaking. They are speaking. Did you hear me or not? I had it happen Sunday. Like, for example, you speak Spanish, but you happen to speak English. But it would be hard for you 
if you didn't understand anything I was saying. And you would be drawn, if I had an interpreter speaking the language that you understand, because you couldn't understand mine, you would be watching him, you would be listening to him, because he's the one that's delivering the message. Is that correct? That's what was happening there. These guys were interpreting in various languages the gospel that Peter was preaching. Does that make sense to you or not? And I'm going to quit with this, Rog. I'm sorry. We don't have time. we got to quit. It happened to me at the picnic the other day here. Lena, are you here? Lena, Lena. She might be the second service. From Ukraine. I've been to Ukraine many times. The only word I can speak is Slava Bogu. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Slava Bogu. Slava Bogu. That's it. That's all I got. But I saw Lena the other day at a picnic. And I saw this sweet little older lady from Slovenia. She's at the picnic. And so I grabbed her, I grabbed her, and I went, come with me. And I took her to Lena. And, I, and they kept speaking to each other in English. And I said, no, no, no. Speak in your tongue, that you, your dialect. And so, yeah, well, I'm from Slovenia. I'm not sure she's from Ukraine. She'll understand me. Try it. So... It's amazing how close the Slovenian language is to the Ukrainian language, the Russian language. And they were communicating. And you know what I did after that? I walked away. Because right there was a comfort that they had. They could understand each other's language. They didn't know each other. They had never met each other. But you could see a bond that happened right there. That's the power of language. Tongues in the church was never meant to be something that divides the church. It was never meant for that. Tongues was meant so that people could hear the gospel and be saved. Do y'all hear me or not? Today, much of the church uses tongues as this. As an outward appearance that I am saved. So therefore you'll be saved because you see me doing it. Therefore you can be saved. Because see I'm saved because you hear me speaking in an unknown language. Which is really not a language. Did y'all hear me or not? Do I know everything about tongues? I do not. But I am bright enough to read the Bible. And to take the scripture right here and see. They were told not to, to leave Jerusalem. There was a reason. People from all over the world would be there. The gospel would have one big chance to be preached to a lot of people. And here's an interesting thought. Some of these people going back home to their different locations that they were traveling back to, wonder how many disciples went with them. You ever thought about that? Say Wonder, and the word cloven means split. It's an interesting word, cloven tongues. I don't know this to be true. It's just something I think that's interesting. Here's a guy that speaks Hebrew, broken Hebrew, Galilean. And the Holy Spirit comes on him, and now he's split. He can not only just speak that language, he can speak this other language. Split. Do you understand that, yes or no? And it's just interesting. Wonder how many... The church was born that day, birthed, you know, and it started spreading. And wonder how many disciples, they, they met that group and they felt so acquainted with that group. And that group was listening to them for hours, maybe. And felt like they were family. And how many may have those disciples maybe said, you know, I'm going to go. Maybe not right away, but I mean, that's how the church was birthed. Did that make any sense to you or not today? Y'all listening or not? What's this got to do with me getting back on my feet, preacher? Roger, we'll quit right there. If you want to clear the screen. Thanks. I got a lot more message. Maybe you can put that on the PowerPoint and then go check it out. But the point is this. If you want to get back on your feet again, stop living by your feelings. 
as you've received Christ. I'm not saying you're going to go speak in an unknown tongue. That's not what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit is in you. You put your faith in Jesus Christ, okay? You got that yes or no? You believe in Jesus Christ? You're born again. No man can be born again lest the Spirit draw him. Okay, we're regenerated into the new birth by the Spirit of the living God. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is not to run around, not to like repeat a bunch of stuff with me, because that's what happens with a lot of tongue talking. They'll have you repeat this, repeat this, repeat this, repeat this, repeat this, repeat this, and then you got it. Aren't you great? Can you see Peter te teaching these jokers any of that? That's not what it's about, guys. The filling of the Holy Spirit is you realizing that you believe in Jesus Christ. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. You humble yourself at the feet of Jesus Christ. You read your word. You hide the word of God in your heart. The Spirit is in you. He's alive in you. He's always with you. He will never leave you. He's the comforter. He's the one that come alongside of you. Why is he in you? To make you rich? He's in you to make you a witness. Did you know it's still all about him and not about you? Yes or no? Say. We're on this planet, but it's still all about him. Did you hear me or not? And so you have the spirit of the living God inside of you. And here's the, speak, here's the tongue I speak. I speak in tongues. Do you know that? Yes or no? I speak in tongues. you know what language I speak? Real. That's the language I speak. Men get me. Y'all hear me or not? Coaches get me. Hell raisers get me. People that think so much as bull get me. You understand or not? Now some people don't get me. And they think I'm drunk. And a fool. Did you hear me? What language do you speak? Did you hear me or not? What language do you speak? What gifting do you have that you can use your testimony, the testimony of Jesus in you, the hope of glory, to reach others for Christ? Did I lose you today? Back here, Larry, a police officer many, many years. I got a feeling you can speak to those guys, Larry. Did you hear me, yes or no? Y'all have a language that you can communicate. That maybe I don't, wouldn't be able to communicate as good as you. You understand what I'm saying? Teachers. Coach right there. You understand? Coach and I get along, don't we, brother? Do you understand my language, Don? Boom! Because Don was a hell raiser. I'm sorry, buddy. And his mom and dad sit next to him. I'm sorry I let the cat out of the bag. You think they know? Yes or no? But isn't that the truth, Don? That we can understand one another. And I'm not on the same page with everybody. Did I lose y'all today? I hope not. Are we okay or not? There's the word. Do with it what you think. I'm just saying, be filled with the Spirit. The purpose of the filling of the Spirit is not your feelings. The purpose of the Spirit is to get the good news of gospel of Jesus Christ out there. He'll be with you. He'll go with you everywhere you go. You can do this. You can do this. Don't make up something. Speak the language that you speak. Be honest. Be real. Be humble before the Lord. And I'll guarantee it. God will bless you and He will help you. Amen? And He will, he will be with you. And we're going to see growth in our church if we do that. You hear me? Amen. Let's praise the Lord for His word this morning. Amen. Come on. That was tough. That was rough. That was rough. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. 
For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.